come and declare that he is God. Together we sing, we join the angels in heaven. We say, you are God, oh God. There is none like you. Praise God. this evening praise the lord amen wherever you are listen to me or watching me via our youtube channel you're welcome to office let us pray father in jesus name lord we thank you we appreciate your name blessed be your name in jesus name we thank you for another time in your presence another time to hear your word and to be learned of you father we pray that you will teach us your word today in the name of jesus lord we pray you will grant unto us insights and understanding to your word in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name we pray amen praise the lord all right today we are going to continue from where we stop in our last class praise the lord but then let me quickly do a recap of our study so far for the benefit of those that are just joining us or those that have missed one lesson or the other praise the lord we started looking at the train of christ praise the lord and we term it um, christology the doctrine of christ christology praise the lord you know, we study is to understand the person of christ to understand his nature as human and as divine praise right to say that we are going also going to be looking at you know the work of the redemption praise the lord and when we started we started looking at you know heresies concerning the person of christ we started looking at uh, misconceptions concerning the person of christ teachings and you know different um, interpretation of the nature the natures of christ praise the lord and um, we're able to consider seven points under this we said we looked at the ibionites the gnostics the herians the apollinarians the nestorians the eutysians and monophysites praise the lord all these are different uh, misconception about the natures of christ about you know being human and also being divine praise the lord but from scriptures we have established the fact that christ is fully god and fully man praise the lord christ is fully god and fully man right then we went further to talk about the orthodox statements concerning the person of christ right and we said these orthodox statements are statements confirming you know to conforming to the accepted an established doctrine of christ praise the lord that is giving you know statements that are in alignment with you know with scriptures concerning the person of christ and we looked at you know those statements praise the lord then we went further by looking at the whole testament prophecy concerning the person of christ and then we divided this into two we looked at the old testament prophecy concerning the person of christ in terms of his deity and we also consider the old testament you know prophecy concerning the person of christ in terms of um, humanity praise the lord pray, praise the living jesus and we're able to look at you know different scriptural references you know to support this facts praise the lord then points the fourth lessons we'll be looking at under you know the doctrine of christ is the incarnation of christ and that is what we are still looking at the incarnation of christ when we started this we gave the definition of what incarnation is and then uh, we said incarnation is god taking upon himself you know human flesh is god taking upon himself you know man praise the lord 
and we're able to look at the facts concerning you know the incarnation we talk about incarnation you know historically praise the lord we talked about the incarnation personally and we looked at incarnation theologically praise the lord we looked at the writings of apostle paul concerning the incarnation of jesus christ we also well consider the writings of peter and as well as john concerning the incarnation of jesus christ praise the lord right so we are going to continue in that talking about the incarnation of christ right and today we are going to be looking at the necessity of the incarnation praise the lord the necessity of the incarnation right now our memory verse is taken from the book of second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 i believe you have the outline the outline is right there on our whatsapp um, um, group you can download and follow as we go through the study together praise the lord right the memory verse is taken from the book of second corinthians chapter 5 verse 22 21 rather and i want us to recite it together wherever you have second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 it says for he hath made him sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him praise the lord now if you look at that scriptural reference we have three personality three personalities in that reference right god jesus and we praise the lord god jesus and we and the believers right script is saying that for he making reference to god had made him sin for us that is god making jesus sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him in christ that we might be made the righteousness of god in christ praise the lord praise the living jesus god himself came you know put on human flesh and died for us and as a result of that we are made the righteousness of god in christ jesus praise the lord praise the living jesus so we are looking at the necessity of the incarnation and this there there are there are two major things which necessitated the incarnation and those two key points is what we are going to consider today we are going to continue from here next week now the question is what are those two things those two points those two key key points that necessitated god right to take on the 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 flesh human flesh to take on man and die for us praise the lord praise the living jesus right the first one is the fall and the sinfulness of man the fall and the sinfulness of man why the other one the second point is the covenant the covenant keeping and covenant making god praise the lord right two things that is the fall of man necessitated the incarnation the fall of man necessitated god to take on the um, human flesh and die for us praise the lord then the second one is the covenant making and covenant keeping god those are the two key things we are going to look at and consider today praise the lord under the necessity of the incarnation right now when god created man it was upon the basis of the edenic covenant now in genesis chapter 1 praise the lord genesis chapter 1 verse 26 through 28 let us open to that reference if you are there if you are with a bible genesis chapter 1 we are reading verse 26 27 and 28 genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 it says and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the hair and over the cattle and over all the herds and over every crippling thing that creepeth upon the herds verse 27 says so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it 
and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the head. Now we can see, you know, God created man in his image and God blessed man. Praise the Lord. Verse 28 says that God blessed them. God blessed man. And God told, God said to man, be fruitful and multiply and subdue the heads. Praise the Lord. Now, God gave man a dominion mandate. God blessed man and gave man dominion mandates, you know, in Genesis. Praise the Lord. But, you know, God entered into covenant with man that he would be his God. And as long as man keeps his own part of the covenant, and the, the part of the covenant, you know, the part of the covenant that man is expected to keep is to obey the instructions and the commandments of God. Praise the Lord. Man is to obey the commandments and God is to continually be the God of man. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. That's the covenant. That's what we refer to as the covenant that God and man made in the garden of eden praise the lord the again covenant was between god and man in extension to the entire human race praise the lord god blessed adam right and gave him dominion over the heads god blessed man and gave him dominion over the heads over everything that he had created praise the lord but this covenant this blessing the fact that god will continually be you know the god of man we only stand as long as man obey the instruction of god as long as man obey you know the commandments of god praise the lord but what we can what we see in genesis chapter 2 is not that in genesis chapter 2 man disobeyed god praise the lord man disobeyed god so man did not fulfill his own part of the covenant and so the covenant was broken praise the lord praise the living jesus the covenant was broken man refused man did not fulfill his own part of the covenant man disobeyed god god gave man instruction but man disobeyed praise the lord and that resulted into sin against god that resulted into sin against god as and as a result of that man lost communion man lost fellowship with god praise the lord praise the living jesus man could no longer interact with god right Man could no longer fellowship with God as a result of you know sin. Scripture says that sin causes separation between you know between God and man, right? Praise the living Jesus. So there was a covenant, but then man did not fulfill his own part of the covenant. But you know, the God we serve is a covenant keeping and covenant making God. Praise the Lord. Right in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9 let's see that Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 scripture says that know therefore that the lord thy god is god the faithful god which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generation praise the lord praise the living jesus it says that god keeps covenant so the god we serve is a covenant making and covenant keeping God. God made covenants with man. He made covenant with man in the Garden of Eden, and he is ob obligated, you know, to keep the covenants. He is obligated to make the covenant stand. Praise the Lord. Despite you know the sin of man. Praise the living Jesus. Right. So man sinned, but then. God had already made covenants with man in the Garden of Eden. And because by the virtue of the covenant that God made with man, God could not allow man to die in sin. So God had to make, you know, an arrangement. God had to make, you know, an alternative. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And the arrangement that God had to make is for someone to do what now? To die for the sin of man. Is for sacrifice to be offered for the sin of man, such that the sacrifice can take away the sin of man. Praise the Lord. But obviously, man cannot die for man. Praise the Lord. There is no one that qualifies to die for man. There is no one that qualifies to die for you know for 
another but God. But God, praise the Lord, praise the living Jesus. But God, so now let, let, let me read from here. It says, To now man sinned and therefore came under the death penalty, and that is what we see in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. It says that, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I will make him a help meet for him. Right? God made a covenant, but man disobeyed. Right? And man came under death penalty. Man came under death penalty. Now, this sinful, the fall of man in the Garden of Eden is the major thing that necessitated the incarnation. Right? In our previous lesson, we defined incarnation as, you know, God taking up the human flesh. God taking up man. You know, God taking on himself man right god becoming man and you know coming to die for the sin of man so the sins this the fall in the garden of eden necessitated you know the incarnation right he thus needed someone to redeem him from death god needed someone to redeem man from death however all those who would be born of adam's race would be born in sin and need redemption from sin and death for themselves praise the lord that is no one you know qualify no one is is able to do what now to die for the sin of another because adam had sinned and through adam sin had entered into humanity into human race and so anyone that is born of the seed, seed of adam is born you know with that sinful nature and so no man is qualified to you know to be the sacrifice for the sin of another praise the lord praise the living jesus now let's check the script following scripture reference psalm 91 99 47 verse 7 to 49 verse 7 to 8 psalm 49 psalm 49 verse 7 to 8 praise the lord psalm 49 verse 70 says none of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to god a ransom for him right then verse 8 says for the redemption of their soul is precious and it's seized forever praise the lord verse 7 says none of them that is making reference to man by any means right redeem his brother can by any means redeem his brother nor give to god a ransom for himself praise the lord that is none is qualified to you know to redeem humanity there is no man that is qualified to to redeem humanity praise the lord let's also look at psalm 51 verse 5 psalm 51 verse 5 psalm 51 verse 5 says behold i was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me that's talking about you know the entire human race as a result of the sin of adam the entire human race you know became you know became sinful and nobody could be a sacrifice you know for the sin of another praise the lord also psalm 58 verse 3 psalm 58 verse 3 it says the wicked are estranged from the womb they go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies praise the lord that's also making reference to the fact that you know when as many that are born you know through the seed of adam are born into sin praise the lord praise the living jesus however god demand you know demanded that god is obligated to the fact that he had made covenant with man that he would always be the god of man praise the lord he had made covenant with man that he would always be in fellowship and communion with man and yet he needs someone to do what now to die as a sacrifice you know for the sin of man praise the lord praise the living jesus so when man sinned 
and came under you know death penalty and you know god needed someone to redeem man from his sin however all those who were born out of you know the seed of adam were not qualified to be a sacrifice you know for for redemption praise the lord praise the living jesus so what happened god himself had to take on the human flesh had to take on man to be able to do what now to be able to die for the sin of you know for the sin of humanity praise the lord praise the living jesus so we've been able to look at the fact that the sin of man necessitated you know the incarnation the sin of man necessitated god to die to to take upon himself human flesh you know to be able to be the sacrifice for the sin of man praise the lord and the second thing is that god himself is a covenant making and covenant keeping god he is not a god scripture says that he is not a man that he should lie praise the lord god is not such a god that would make a covenant with man today and tomorrow you say no i'm retrieving from i'm retrieving the covenant praise the lord god is not such a god that will say something today and will say another thing tomorrow praise the lord he had to keep to the covenant he had made with man and that was why he had to make you know alternative for you know for that covenant to work praise the lord praise the living just now i want us to note these three key things concerning the necessity of the incarnation praise the lord now the first thing as i've mentioned earlier is that man sinned and therefore must die praise the lord man sinned and therefore must die praise the lord first corinthians chapter 15 verse 21 first corinthians 15 21 first corinthians 15 21 very quickly it says for since by for since by man came that by man came also the resurrection of the dead praise the lord by one man came death so man sinned and therefore man must surely die romans chapter 5 verse 21 romans chapter 5 verse verse 12 we are going to read just verse 12 we are meant to read from verse 12 to 21 but let's read verse 12 it says wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin so man sinned and therefore man came under that penalty of death praise the lord then it said the second point is that only man could die for man it is only man that you, you know only man could die for man of course but no man born of adam race could qualify as all are born and shaping in sin praise the lord that is none of the man born of adam race is qualified to die for man praise the lord of course in job chapter 14 verse 4 you know it talks about the fact that no one is clean enough you know to be a sacrifice for the sin of another praise the lord then the third point is that only god could redeem man praise the lord only god it is only god that qualified to be the redeemer because no man is able to redeem the other it is only god that qualified to be the redeemer but of course god could not redeem man as god so god had to become man so that he will be able to redeem man praise the lord i hope i'm communicating and i hope you know the spirit of god is interpreting this in our hearts praise the lord right god needed to redeem man but of course there is no man that is he could use to be the sacrifice for others praise the lord so that means that makes him alone to qualify to be the word to be the redeemer praise the lord but in the prayers of that he could he, he actually could not redeem man as god he could not redeem man as god praise the lord praise the living jesus then he had to do what now become man so that he will be qualified to be able to redeem man praise the lord praise the living jesus so god became sinless man by the incarnation to redeem man back to himself 
praise the Lord. It is as simple as that. God became sinless by incarnation. And what did I mean by that? That is, God took upon himself the form of man. And that is what Philippians says, right? Philippians chapter 2, Paul writing by the Holy Spirit, you know, to the church. Philippians chapter 2. You know from verse from verse 5 it says let this might be in you which was also in christ jesus who being in the form of god right thought it not robbery to be equal with god but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men praise the lord praise the living jesus he was made in the likeness of men he took upon himself the form of man and that is what we refer to as the incarnation that is god you know taking upon himself you know the form of man becoming man so that he will be able to die for the sin of man so that he will be able to redeem man back to himself praise the lord praise the living jesus so that is what we mean by the incarnation now let's read you know just two scriptural references galatians chapter 4 verse 4 and five galatians chapter four galatians chapter four we'll read verse four and five let's see what it says galatians chapter four verse four it says but when the fullness of time was come god sent forth his son right made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of you know of sons praise the lord as is god sent his son god himself became man you know so that he will be able to redeem you and high from you know from the death penalty that came upon the human race as a result of the sin of adam also second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 that is actually a memory verse it says for he had made him to be seen right for us who knew no that we might be made the righteousness of god in him praise the lord praise the living god so what i've been able to you know pass across to us this um evening you know talking about you know the necessity of the incarnate two things necessitated you know the incarnation of christ praise the lord the first is that god himself is a covenant making and covenant keeping god he made a covenant you know with with humanity in the garden of eden that he will be their god and you know they shall be his people praise the lord he blessed them and he gave them dominion mandate but of course what we saw in genesis chapter 2 was that you know human race through adam did not keep to his own parts of the covenant praise the lord but of course god is a covenant keeping god praise the lord he will never at any point in time you know retrieve or break his covenant according to the Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 that we read you know saying talk, make, re, making reference to god as a covenant keeping god praise the lord so god had to make an arrangement you know to be able to redeem man from back to himself so that man will not just die in sin and of course it, there was no there is no man that qualified for that so he himself had to take upon himself the form of man to be able to redeem man back to himself praise the lord we are going to stop here we are going to stop here but then we are going to continue with the teaching you know next week sunday by the grace of god praise the lord praise the living years wherever you are i want you to pray i want you to bow your heads and pray this prayer that god will reveal himself unto you by his word in jesus name we all need the revelation of you know of god we need the revelation of who god is praise the lord for us to be able to enjoy him for us to be able to enjoy the work of redemption praise the lord so i want you to just begin to pray asking the lord to reveal himself to you by his word in the name of jesus father we pray this evening that you reveal yourself to us by your word in the name of jesus father we pray for revelation of who you are praise in the name of jesus father we pray that you will become more and more real to us in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name we pray praise the lord i believe you've been blessed you know by the teaching of the word of god through the word face platform 
and i want to encourage you you know to um remain blessed and to follow the teaching as we continue next week in jesus name praise the lord right now we want to pray we're going to spend the next few minutes you know to pray together and wherever you are you know hearing my voice or you are watching through our youtube channels i want you to you know to pray to be in the mood of prayer first i want you to begin to thank and appreciate god for what god is doing in our means as a church as an assembly for what god is doing you know in our individual families of a truth the lord has been good to us praise the lord scripture says in psalm 136 verse 1 to 2 it says the lord is good praise the lord for the lord is good right the lord is good to us all the time all the time the lord is good to us praise the lord praise the living jesus says bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me oh bless his holy name says give thanks unto the lord for his good and for his mercy and dread forever give thanks to the god of gods for his mercy and dread forever give thanks to the lord of lords for his mercy and dread forever for the lord is good and his mercy and dread forever i want you to just you know begin to appreciate god and begin to thank him because he is good to you is good to me is good to me and my family is good to my home for the lord is good at this time he has been the one sustaining us i want you to just thank him thank him for everything even if you know things are not going as you probably have projected or you have planned that it should but then scripture says that in all things that we should give thanks in all things that we should give thanks praise the lord father we give you thanks father we give you praise because you alone are god father we thank you because of what you have done for us we thank you for sustaining our lives we thank you father for grace and mercy that we enjoy we thank you for your favor that rests upon us father we are grateful lord we are grateful to you our father we are grateful to you father we thank you we thank you because it is in you we live it is in you we move it is in you we have our being father we thank you for being our sustainer father we thank you for being a shield unto us we thank you for being a refuge unto us oh blessed be your name lord we give you praise father we give you praise father we give you praise we thank you jesus we thank you jesus glory be to your name glory be to your name thank you for your blessings in our lives lord thank you for provisions lord we thank you father for grace that we enjoy thank you for your mercy thank you father for everything lord we are grateful in jesus mighty name we give thanks amen praise the lord beloved i want us to pray according to luke chapter 3 verse 21 scripture says that jesus prayed was baptized and he prayed and heavens was opened upon him praise the lord i want you to pray at this time that lord let heavens be opened upon me and my household in the name of jesus father for the remaining days in this month lord i pray for open heaven in the name of jesus let heaven be open upon me let heaven be open upon my household in the name of jesus let heaven be open upon my business let heaven be open upon my career let heavens be open upon my academies in the name of jesus father i pray for open heavens at this time in the name of jesus let your heavens be open in the name of jesus father i refuse to operate i refuse to live on that close heaven lord i pray that heaven will open continually upon my life in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name we pray amen now we also according to revelation chapter 3 verse 8 praise the lord revelation chapter 3 verse 8 you know revelation 3 8 praise the lord it says from verse 7 let's read from verse 7 it says and to the angels of the church in philadelphia writes these things see it he that is holy he that is true he that hath the key of david he that openeth and no man shuts and he that shuts and no man can open i know that works behold i have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it praise the lord jesus says you know through the mount of um, through revelation to john is saying that i have said before thee an open door and no man can shut i want you to pray this time that lord 
set before me an open door in the name of jesus let doors great doors begin to open unto me doors of opportunities in the name of jesus let they begin to open unto me in the name of jesus father i pray for open doors in the name of jesus open doors lord to great opportunities in the name of jesus lord open doors lord that will declare me to my generation in the name of jesus father for me and my household i pray at this time for open doors in the name of jesus let doors begin to open unto me continually in the name of jesus let great doors doors of great opportunity begin to open unto me continually in the name of jesus father i pray for open doors lord i pray for open doors let doors begin to open unto me by their own accord in the name of jesus let great doors begin to open unto me by their own accord in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name we pray amen in jesus mighty name we pray amen now third john chapter 2 third john chapter 2 says beloved i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thou so prosperest scripture saying that i wish above all things that you prosper i want to pray this time that lord prosperity come unto me in Jesus. father let your prosperity come unto my family in the name of jesus father in everything i do i pray for prosperity in the name of jesus i prosper lord in everything i set out to do i prosper in everything i lay my hands upon to do in the name of jesus lord let me be like the tree planted by the rivers of water let me bring my forth my fruit in season lord and let everything i set out to do prosper in the name of jesus lord let everything i do let everything i set out to do begin to prosper in the name of jesus let the dimension of your prosperity rest upon my life rest upon my household in the name of jesus masuzu manda eru bashanda laba eru masuzu belihanda liabo shatu zamanda lord i pray in the name of jesus for prosperity in the name of jesus let prosperity come unto me in the name of jesus let prosperity come unto me in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name we pray amen beloved i believe you are praying wherever you are believe you are praying you know prayer is the key to all things and at this time i want to encourage you you know to pray now we are praying according to psalm 35 verse 27 psalm 25 verse 27 praise the lord praise the living jesus psalm 35 verse 27 it says let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my right that favor my righteous cause praise the lord it says let them shout for joy and be glad praise the lord i want you to pray at this time that there shall be shouts of joy and gladness in the name of jesus father let there be shouts of joy and gladness in the name of jesus lord let there be shouts of joy and gladness lord in my life in my home lord in the name of jesus lord i pray for shouts of joy i pray for shouts of gladness in the name of jesus that lord for the remaining parts of this year i will not mourn in the name of jesus i will not sorrow in the name of jesus in my home in my home lord there shall be shouts of joy there shall be shout of gladness in the name of jesus manash and the Aku Sutama Nesha Ilu Sutabali Handrebede Eruma Shanda Liado Susu Bregedosha. Lord, I pray for shout of joy in the name of Jesus. I pray for shout of joy and gladness in my home in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. At this time, I want you to pray wherever you are that Lord supply my needs in the name of Jesus. Father, let my needs be met 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for provision. I pray for divine supply in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray at this time for divine supply in the name of Jesus. Scripture says that God will meet all our needs. Lord, I pray at this time you will meet my needs in the name of Jesus. I will not suffer once. I will not suffer once. Scripture says for the Lord is for 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 the Lord shepherd i shall not want lord i pray this morning that all my needs are met in the name of jesus my needs are supplied in the name of jesus my needs are divinely supplied in the name of jesus manish ebregede makusuta manosh embarusa heru bahantu suman delegede mana manasha you are my shepherd lord i will not want for anything good in the name of jesus i will not want for provision in the name of jesus because my provisions are supplied in the name of jesus i will not want law for finances law because my finances are supplied in the name of jesus my son Banasa, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you meet my needs in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We are praying according to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19. Scripture says, from verse 18, it says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth scripture jesus god saying i will do a new thing i will do a new thing for you i will do a new thing in your home i want you to pray at this time that lord do something new for me in the name of jesus do something new in my family do something new in my home do something new lord for me and my household in the name of jesus father i pray for something new lord do something new do something new for me in the name Kropotos Iganasha Rabaneando Suzu Bregede Mashikanda Lia Barusa Father I pray for something new Lord do something new for me in the name of Jesus Father do something new for me and my house in the name of Jesus Nana Suta Manasha Irubarian Barus Itanana Sita Lero Boroto Soto Zumana Nana Lord do something new for me in the name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray the second part of Isaiah chapter forty three verse nineteen we read earlier it says and shall I will even make a way in the wilderness. God is saying that He will make a way for you, make a way in the wilderness. I want you to pray at this time that Lord make ways for me in the name of Jesus. Father, make ways for me in the name of Jesus. Make way for me. Oh Lord, make way for me in the name of Jesus in business. Lord, make way for me. My sin and barusha. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you make way for me and my family in the name of Jesus. Lord, even in, 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 in this time, at this time that you know there, there is recession and economic crisis everywhere, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you make a way for me in the name of Jesus. Lord, you do a you and make a way for me in the name of Jesus. Manash ikusuta mero borus enda legede mara manihanda lusuta manana e rege de guna nena shita manana nosi e bradu suta maruj em bregede e romana nana nana shata. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Psalm 91 from verse 1 says, He that dwelleth in the second place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It says, I will say to, to I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him surely he shall deliver me from this from the snare of the fowler and from the noiseless pencilence. Praise the Lord. I want you to pray at this time. That the Lord will deliver you and your household from noisome pestilence in the name of Jesus. That the Lord will deliver you from noisome pestilence in the name of Jesus. That noisome pestilence will not come near your dwelling. It will not come near your home in the name of Jesus. COVID-19 will not come near your dwelling. I want you to begin to declare that in the name of Jesus. No plague will come near my home. 
no plague will come near my dwelling noise and pestilence will not come near, near my dwelling in the name of jesus lord at this time lord i'm safe i'm secured in the name of jesus i'm protected lord i pray for divine protection for me and my household in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i pray in the name of jesus that noisome pestilence will not come near my dwelling in the name of jesus plague will not come near my dwelling in the name of jesus COVID-19 will not come near me and my household. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be for us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In Exodus chapter 8, verse 22 and verse 26, you know, scripture says that God himself exempted, you know, the Israelites from the plague that was upon the Egyptians that god put them in a place called goshem and they were exempted from evil i want to pray this time that lord from now and for the remaining parts of this year lord i'm exempted from evil in the name of jesus i'm exempted from evil that will happen on earth lord at this time in the name of jesus i'm exempted from evil i'm exempted from plague in the name of jesus my household and high lord we are exempted from any evil in the name of jesus makana shuta riba no suta manosha leke to zusu braniande liku suta manash idu tsubana ero baba baba in the name of jesus we are exempted from evil in the name of jesus we are exempted lord from any plague and disaster in the name of jesus so shall it be for us in jesus mighty name we pray amen in jesus mighty name we pray now we are praying from psalm 21 from verse 1 psalm 21 verse 1 it says i will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence comments my help verse 2 my help coming from the lord which made the heaven and the heart it will not suffer thy foot to be moved he that keepeth thee will not slumber behold he that keepeth israel shall neither slumber nor sleep the lord is thy keeper the lord is a shade upon the right upon the right hand the sun shall not smite thee by the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. In and thy coming in from this time forth and evil forever. Now this scripture is loaded. Verse one says, "I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from where it cometh my help." Beloved, this is not the time you know to look unto man for help. This is not the time you know to be looking around for help. This is the time for you to look up to heaven for help scripture says i will look up to to the hills. i will look up to the hills from where comments my help praise the lord right so i want you to pray at this time father i look up to you lord help me in the name of jesus be my help send help and help us to me in the name of jesus lord i look for help send help to me in the name of jesus send help to my family send help to my household in the name of jesus lord let my head not lack help at this time in the name of jesus let my life not lack help at this time in the name of jesus i receive help from the north i receive help from the south i receive help from the from the east and west in the name of jesus i receive help from above in the name of jesus lord i know my help come from you i receive help from you at this time in the name of jesus father send help to me in the name of jesus lord send help to me lord send help to me in the name of jesus father send help to me lord send help to me in the name of jesus man anush ibarusa Prura ba di handele shita mananosi ero ba hantu sumanda. Lord, send help to me in the name of Jesus. I look up to you for help. Father, send help to me and my home. Send help to me and my family in the name of Jesus. Lord, at this time of crisis, Lord on health, Lord, send help to me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus, my name we pray. I want us to pray at this time, Lord, for our dear country, Nigeria. I want us to pray 
that the Lord will have mercy upon this country in the name of Jesus upon this country over COVID-19 pandemic and over economic crisis Lord we pray that you have mercy in the name of Jesus have mercy upon us Lord have mercy upon Nigeria over COVID-19 pandemic over economic crisis in the name of Jesus Father we pray you will heal our land you will heal our economy you will heal this world in the name of Jesus you will heal this earth in the name of Jesus Lord we pray you will heal us you will heal Nigeria you have mercy upon Nigeria in the name of Jesus so shall it be in Jesus mighty name we pray amen if you believe the lord has heard you if you believe the lord has answered your prayer i want you to begin to appreciate god scripture says that this is the confidence that we have in him whenever we pray according to his will he hear us i believe the lord has had our prayer this evening i believe the lord has given us testimonies to our request i want you to just begin to appreciate him i want you to just begin to praise him and say father we thank you father we appreciate you father we thank you because you have heard us we thank you because you have answered us at this time lord we are grateful unto your name oh we are grateful we thank you jesus in jesus mighty name we pray in jesus mighty name we pray father we thank you because at this time you have heard us lord we give you glory we appreciate your name Lord, even as we have prayed, Lord, as we go in this week, we pray your goodness and your mercy shall go with us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray at this time, Lord, we are exempted from evil that will happen on earth this week in the name of Jesus. We are myself and our family and every one of us connected to this ministry. We are blessed in the name of Jesus. Our going out is blessed in the name of Jesus and our coming in is blessed in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Remain blessed. Amen. Join us again for celebration service on Sunday by 8 a.m. at the prayer colosseum and for Bible study on Wednesday by 5 p.m. God bless you.